Okay, hope everybody is doing well, staying safe, staying healthy. I wanted to run through uh, the first practice problem that I sent out just to get our brains working again to uh, refresh some of those inference rules that we used really to warm up. Um, and using this problem, as far as level of difficulty, this is like a two or a three, uh, but it's helpful to just remind us of some of those rules, like I said, and how to use them. And I'll describe uh, my thinking process when I look at a proof like this, um, what goes through my mind, uh, how to do it. And uh, so I'll, I'll do another video with that second practice problem that we went through that's a little bit more complicated, uh, but this should get us up and running and uh, yeah, refresh us with, with some of those rules that we took a look at. So right away, uh, this is what you do on, on every proof. Remember, you're looking at the goal. Here's the conclusion, that's the goal, that's what you want to prove. We wanna prove just S, all right, S by itself. So how do we do that? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk through this proof working backwards in a way, all right? Um, some people like to just put down the conclusion automatically. That's fine if you wanna do that. I'm not gonna do that just to keep the screen clean so we don't get any clutter, um, but we'll keep that in mind. This is where we're going. This is gonna be the last step in the proof, so remember that. Uh, now, how do we get S by itself? All right, so what I'm seeing here is there's S right there in that second line right here. So hopefully we can get S by itself from this line. And how do we do that? Well, I have the inference rules in my head. They're also in the PDF, obviously, and you'll have the, the inference rules on the exam, but you'll want them in your head in the sense that you'll need to know which rule to apply pretty immediately. Um, and then this, the, the rules right here are there just to check um, to make sure that you're using it correctly. All right, so there, there are all the rules, the inference rules and the forms. Um, we have more equivalence rules over here. Right now I'm sticking with these right here. So the first thing I notice is this is a disjunctive statement. This is a disjunction, uh, S or D. And so it's gonna rule out a bunch of rules that don't use uh, disjunction or or, right? So it's gonna rule this one out. That's just conditional, conditional, conditional. And I get to this rule. There's there's a disjunctive, disjunction. There's an or statement. So this looks promising. And this rule says if I have P or Q, and I have the negation of one of those sides, I get the other side, all right? If I have, it's in my left hand or in my right hand, it's not in my right hand, I have it's in my left hand. That's that rule, okay. so. What we need to get S by itself, which is our goal, is the negation of this. And we see it right here in this first line, not D, perfect. Okay, so we need this not D to get the S by itself, which is our goal. That's how I'm running through this. All right, so how do we get not D by itself? Well, again, I have the inference rules in my head and this looks like the form of the first rule that we have, if I have if P then Q, and I have that antecedent, that left side P, I can get Q, right? If I have this already, and I have this already, I can then put down this as the new rule. And this is the form. So in our case, P is gonna be what? F or E, all right? That follows this form. Again, these are forms, and then uh, this is going to be our P in this case, and then not D is going to be our Q in this case. So if P then Q, here it's if F or E, then not D. So I need this to get this. I need this antecedent to get this because I have this conditional. Okay, and if I have this, then I can get S and S by itself is what we want. So that's how I think through the proof. I'm over explaining it. Um, I hope I'm make, not making it too complicated, but those are the sorts of ideas that are in my head if I look at a proof like this. All right, so let's get into it. So the first thing that we're gonna do, remember, we have to get this to get this to get this. So let's get this first. And if I have this, right, I need this, so how am I gonna get it? Well, I'm gonna look at number three. There's an E, and there's a rule that says, if I have something, 
then I can just or add or and whatever I want to that thing that I have in the first place. All right, so let's take a look at that rule. Remember, there are rules on this second page. I'm going to look at addition. If I have P, I can just add or and whatever I want. This is sort of the rabbit out of the hat rule. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive, but it makes sense when you think it through. If I have P, then I can just or whatever I want. And this is going to come in handy for this proof in particular. If I have P, then it doesn't matter what order I put the disjunction down. All right, I can do P or Q, or I can do Q or P. So really, this rule lets you sort of skip the commutation rule. Commutation, sorry, commutation equivalence rule. This says if I have P or Q, then the equivalent statement is just Q or P, right? I can just commute that. Uh, those sides, switch them up, those things go for a ride, they, they swap, that's a commutation rule. So let's say I put down P or Q, if I needed to, I could just do the commutation rule to get Q or P, and this really lets you just skip that. Okay, again, I'm over explaining it, but you get the idea. So if I have P, I can write down Q or P, which means in this case, if I have E, which is equivalent to P in that argument form, E, I can just put down as my new statement, E or F. What I did there is I, from E, just ORed whatever I wanted. And of course, what I wanted, oh, nope, I already messed up. Okay, what I'm gonna do is do F or E because that's the form that I want to get not D. All right, and so what did I get that from? What line? I got it from three. Three, and the rule that I used is addition. All right, so that's my new line that we got. All right, so the next line, if I have this conditional and I have the antecedent, which is F or E, then I can get this consequent, not D. And remember, I want not D to get S by itself. All right, so I used one, no, sorry, I got not D, and which lines did I get that from? I got it from one, and I got it from the one that I just created, four. And I used the inference rule, modus ponens. Just go over that one more time. If P then Q, and I have the antecedent, I get the consequent. Okay, I have not D, great, got that by itself. Now, I'm looking at not D and I'm looking at this line two because if I have S or D and I have the negation of D, I get that other side, which is S. So it allows me, given this and given this, I can just put down S and that's the goal. That's what we wanted in the first place. That's what we're proving. We're proving this from all of this, one, two, and three. So I put down S and where did I get it from? I got it from line two. And I got it from line five, which I just put down. And it's the disjunctive syllogism rule. Okay, so I got my, my goal. Now I'm going to check to see if I did anything wrong, if I did everything right. If I did everything right, I should get a congratulations. Checking proof, congratulations, no errors. And that is what you want. That's what you want in every proof. So from this, this, and this, we proved the conclusion S.